What's up, everybody? We are so happy to be back. Uh, we haven't been busy at all. We've just been lazy and slacking off. Nothing's been going on. Um, we're so happy to be making this episode for you guys. I know it's been a little bit, and we are truly sorry for that. Um, it's been some big things going on, and I've been gone, and Tyler's had to do his job for some reason. Yeah. But, Joey, where'd you go on vacation? Oak Island, North Carolina. Pretty neat. It was awesome. It was very neat. It was a lot of fun. That's cool. What did you do there? Uh, you know, just hung out on the beach, did some shopping, used the air mattress as a boogie board, just the normal vacation what? stuff. I just used the air mattress as a boogie board, sprained my you, ankle, you, just the, you, just the normal vacation person, stuff. You were that person on the beach where everyone was, like, judging. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, man, they probably thought you. Man, you did not represent Ohio well. Oh, I was on vacation. I was like, I'm never seeing these people again. I'm doing whatever I want. So okay, I used how, the air mattress as a boogie board. How well did that work? Mm, it worked okay at first, but then I took a little spill. So I, I fell twice. First time, I scraped my back on a bunch of seashells, and you think I would learn my lesson, but... uh. I'm kind of dumb, so I got back on the air mattress, and it flipped over, and I tried to jump off and just landed wrong and sprained my ankle, but I would do it again. Man, okay, here's, I think, the most important question, all right? Whose air mattress was it? Like, who was sleeping on the air mattress the night? Trinity. (laughs) Stole her bed. (laughs) You you, you did that to your younger sister. Oh, yeah, I would do it again. So she was sleeping on ocean water that night. She on the air mattress. I don't know where she slept that night. I think the air mattress popped. So not only did you use your sister's air mattress as a boogie board, you broke your sister's air mattress I, hey man, that she was sleeping was, on during this vacation. Was my dad, my dad, the guy with the master's degree, wanted to do this. Blame it on Glenn. Hey man, man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Well, I'm glad you had a good vacation. That was awesome. And I'm glad you didn't have get too hurt um, standing on an air mattress in the ocean. My ankle's still swollen. Really? Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, nothing, you know, busy's been going on at the church or anything. It's not like, oh, wait, we do have a new pastor that started in the past week. Oh, yeah. Um, pastor Matt Reed. It's a new senior pastor at Jersey Church after um, Pastor John retiring after 42 years. And so um, it's, uh, you know, pretty exciting time. Thankful for Pastor John, but, um, you know, thankful for, for Pastor Matt as well. And it, it has been, um, yeah, just a, a little busy around here with all that stuff. And so we're excited for that. Try to get I try to get Pastor Matt on today. And that's why we don't have a guest. Um, apparently, he's a little busy this week. His, you know, first four days as um, senior pastor at at Jersey Church. Um, I wanted to ask him what his favorite memory um, has been of being senior pastor. Um, and so, I guess we'll just have to wait a few more days for that to happen. But, but yeah, things are um, are are starting back up. School's starting back up. Joey, when do you when do you start college? Uh, today is the 24th and I start in five days, five days. Yeah. Are you excited? Nope. I mean, yes. So excited. School is very, very important. Yeah. So we're talking about school today. Um, because like Joey said, school, um, is important. Um, Joey, what kind of grades did you get in high school? My grades were good. I actually talked to Tyler about this the other day because I'm like the most non-serious person you'll ever meet, but I had good grades in high school. I did How good. good of grades? Almost a 4.0. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Every year high um, school. Yeah. Um, I didn't get good grades. I got grades. I got grades. You got and grades. Uh, I got some grades, too. And I, and I passed school, passed high school, got a college degree, taking some seminary classes. So, um, 
you know, but I, I, I did not um, take schoolwork as important as I could have or should have. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to talk a little bit just about school today and the, the importance of trying to do um, as well as we can and work at it, um, but also just viewing school as a mission field and just looking at the opportunities that we have um, for, um, you know, God, God put us there for a reason. So just talking more about that as well. Joey, what's your, what's your favorite subject in school? Lunch. That does not count. You were homeschooled. You eat lunch at your kitchen table. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, eat it, you eat it with your dog, Freckles. And so. Yeah. How, is Freckles still kicking? Somehow. Not, not literally kicking, but like alive. He's not kicking, but he's he's something. He's still breathing. Okay. Is he still peeing on people? <laughs> That's the other dog. Oh, I bet. What's the other dog's name? Lily. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever been Wait, to my if house, you, if, you, yeah. if you've ever been to my house, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Make sure that Lily is put away before you. Yeah. Put away and or put down before you walk in. <laughs> sorry. I apologize to any of the sergeants listening to this. Um, <laughs> forgive me. Uh, better. Um, oh, man. Okay. I could make this that happen. <clears throat> might be my last time ever on this podcast. It would be great <laughs> knowing you all. I'm about to be canceled. Oh, man. <laughs> favorite so subject. Oh, yeah. Yeah, favorite subject. <laughs> favorite subject. Um... Probably English. I'm good at English. Not talking, but I can write. I can write papers like a like a madman. Yeah. Oh yeah. You don't use power. AI, correct, to write your papers? Nope. Good job. Nope. Nope. Because professors and or teachers will know that it was yeah. written by AI. So don't. Although use... I did just download ChatGPT. So really? I did. I downloaded it yesterday. I was asking it questions about um, bass fishing, and then when I was done with my conversation, I told it to shut up, and it said that it was very sorry. So, well, at least it apologized. It has manners. It did. Um, yeah. Did it give you? Did it give you good answers? Yeah, it was very informative. Give me, give me a question to ask it. Um, write a country song about Ethan Ness. Right, a country song. student ministry intern, Ethan Ness. About student ministry intern Ethan Ness. Oh man, it's lagging. I gave it a hard one. Uh oh, the robots are not working. They're not. It's loading. I got a pretty good question for us to ask AI here in a few minutes. Were you in my office the one day we had AI write a country song about John Brad Riley? No. Yeah. John Brad was supposed to come on our podcast today, too, but he got too busy. John Brad. Oh, here it is. All right, oh, let's hear it. You got to sing it for us since you're... No, I'm not singing anything. <clears throat> I will read this. All right. Well, gather around, folks. I've got a tale to tell about a student ministry intern you all know so well. Ethan Ness, he's the heart of our crew, spreading love and faith. Yeah, that's what he'll do. That's pretty good. Ethan Ness, with a heart so true, bringing hope and love to me and you. In student ministry, he's a shining star, guiding us, guiding us all, no matter how near or far. That's a good one. He walks in with his Bible and a big old grin, teaching us about life and how to avoid sin. With a guitar Ooh, in his hand bars. and a song in his heart. A lot of bars. He'll lead us in worship and will never part. I don't know if I'm okay with the never part thing, but yeah, Ethan Ness with a heart so true, bringing hope and love to me and you. Good oh, job, AI. That was very good. We'll see if we can get Bond to record that. <laughs> yeah, that's good job. Good job, AI. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, good. so in- English your favorite subject? Do you like favorite reading books subject. or just writing papers? Um. I'm not a big book reader. The only book I read is the Bible. That's about it. Okay. Not, I mean, here in five days, I'll be reading a lot more than that. But 
So I was talking. I was talking to one of our. I was talking to one of our students, Katie, Katie Shaw, last night. Um, and she loves reading books. All right, Joey, guess how many books she has read since January first? Thirty-seven. Fifty-two books. Whoa. Yeah, I made sure I told her about our Celebrate Recovery program at the church. Um, <laughs> Is she 50, homeschooled? No, no, no. She goes to Johnstown. Wow. Um, okay. She reads books, yeah, in class, though. So. Um, yeah, it's it's intense. Um, but yeah. All right, Katie Shaw. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Impressive. Um, English was I've not... Read, oh, I don't think good. I've read 52 books in my entire life. So, Well, that's disappointing. You like my bookshelf <laughs> back there? How many of those have you actually read, Tyler? All right, hold on. I'm going to grab one. I'm just going to randomly grab one off the shelf. I'm going to see if I've read it. Okay. (laughs) What do we got? What do we got? Big money. Um, Small group leadership. Have you read that? As spiritual direction. Heather Webb. Um, No. I don't even know where I got this book. All right, well, we're going to try one more. Let me pull a book out of my bag. All right, I got a book. Uh, well, I got one more. Oh, look at that. That's from camp. Good job. Favorite favorite book. Favorite book right here, guys. Good job. Um, yeah. So this one right here, this is Sustainable Youth Ministry. By Mark DeVries. Great book. I've heard him speak. I've met with him a couple times. Um, I have read this one. This one, actually, I bought Pastor John a copy of this. And then, like, a year later, he gave it back to me. I don't think he read it. Um, But but anyways, um, I don't even remember why I gave it to him. Um, But, yeah. So, I mean, he has a lot of books in his office. I actually, he was giving away a lot of them. And I got some of his books. Nice. I haven't read it's it yet. Cool. Um, but yeah, English was not one of my favorite subjects. I, I think I kind of enjoyed history. Like that's what history I, is cool. It was it was pretty neat. I like I liked history. My wife Brittany cannot say in history. She's like, why? It's the past. It doesn't matter. Like things like that. And I'm like, oh, no, that's good stuff. It is. Good stuff. I know, but yeah, lame. So the whole Bible um, is history. I, amen. Amen. Brittany's got some explaining to do. I know. I'll have to. I'll, we'll have to get her on here to explain herself. All right. And so, um, so school starts back. A lot of our students are are in school. Um, at the time of recording this, a lot of them should be in school. Like, yeah, like right now. Um, you know, I th- I think a lot of times we have the attitude of, um, school just being like, you know, obviously not fun and just boring and just not worth 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 the time and effort and uh, starts early and just kind of don't want to be there. I think it can be really difficult when we have that mindset and we miss opportunities, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. God has purposely put you in that school or if you're homeschooled in that co-op, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you can even think about it in your workplace too. God has purposely put you in your workplace. Like Joe, you work at Depot Street Coffee Shop. God mm-hmm. has purposely put you there. And so I think we have to look at it and discover what is my purpose there, right? What yeah. is my purpose at this job? What's my purpose in the school? Why am I here? And who around me needs to hear about Jesus? Um, because I'm here for a reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. So first I want to talk to our co-op kids, which Joey, you were a co-op kid. I was can a co-op you, kid. Can you explain for some of our public school students uh, what a co-op is? is because it's it's a pretty foreign concept oh uh, i can't say that i was gonna say waste of time but i figured that's probably not the best way to start not a it's, waste not, of time. it's not a waste of time it's not it's a very good use of your time um but co-op is just like like my mom couldn't teach me geometry so I had to go to a co-op to be taught by somebody else. So it's like 
homeschool kids, if they're not taking like an online course, they go to a co-op and there's tons of different ones. Um, I went to Cornerstone, which a while back, there's a lot of people in our ministry that went to Cornerstone, but I went there and you take classes by certified teachers. Like they've been certified by the state. So it's just kind of like a place for people to meet. And there's a ton of different families and kids and a lot of different teachers and it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's definitely different, but it is cool that there's like that kind of outlet for homeschoolers. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so that's what a co-op is. But can you kind of get the feeling where, like, especially probably the co-op you went to was Christian co-op, right? Yeah. Um, you kind of get the feeling, especially maybe more so in the homeschool area field, where it's like, man, everyone around me is a Christian. Mm-hmm. Would you feel like that at times? Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you that's pro- probably not accurate, right? Um, but it's right. easy to think that way. And I think it's hard to train our minds to think, okay, because um, it, whether it's a Christian school or a co-op, that doesn't mean everyone around us is a Christian. And so we need to be thinking, and as we're talking with friends, thinking, man, okay, I need to make sure that I'm still sharing the gospel with these people because they might think that they're saved, but they might not be saved, right? Mm-hmm. Or they might not be following Christ. They just might know about Christ. And so um, I think that's something that we have to be intentional with in living um, on mission, even in those <clears throat> environments that might still be Christian. Yeah. Okay. So I definitely, so yeah. That's I definitely co-op. felt like that at times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is very like. I guess it's it's harder to tell, but I mean, if you're being like intentional about talking to people about that, I guarantee you'll find somebody pretty easily. So, yeah. I mean, like Tyler was saying about jobs, though, when I worked at Chick Fil A, um, I would work nights a lot, and there were a ton of kids my age that all didn't know Jesus, and I wasn't in a great place with my relationship then. So, sharing with them wasn't something that I was super intentional about, which I really regret because there's a lot of kids there that that, that could have used the love of Jesus, but um, at Depot Street, like I've had a lot of conversations about church. They're less about God and more about like Sunday services, which I try to try to kind of redirect it back towards God. But I mean, even just talking about church is a pretty big step towards evangelizing and just somebody hearing about Jesus. Yeah, so we need to make sure our minds are trained to, to think missionally, even in those uh, quote unquote Christian environments, whether it's Christian school, um, co op, you know, Christian co op, uh, or even youth group. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, on Wednesday nights at church and even Sunday mornings. When was the last time that you lived on mission on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night? And so I think we need to just train our minds to think in that way. And so, um, public school, obviously, um, we got to be thinking too, to be on mission in our schools. Mm-hmm. I mean, God has you there for a reason, for a purpose. Yeah. And we need to be sharing about him, sharing about Christ. And there are people all around us that need to hear about him. And so we, we are there for a reason. So, um, not to think negatively about school or being there, or dreading being there. Uh, but being excited for the opportunities that we have around us mm-hmm. and, and being willing to take those opportunities um, yeah. that we're surrounded by. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. go. It's not always like a easy thing to do. Um, like, I don't want to try and downplay it. Like, it's not easy to evangelize, but I'm telling you, like, if you... If you seem passionate about what you're talking about, people will want to listen. Um, Like, I don't know. It just kind of, I feel like I see that all the time. Like, worship leading is something I'm really passionate about. So when people kind of ask about me, I like to lead with that. So they, like, know what I'm about up front. Like, they know what I'm passionate about. And they can just see maybe Jesus working in my life. Yeah. But it's not always a comfortable thing. Um but I mean, once you do it, like it does feel rewarding just to know that 
that you try to evangelize to somebody and that doesn't mean stop trying but i mean it does it does feel nice to like know that you were trying to to spread god's god's word it's awesome um all right we'll try and see if we can talk about three more things in the next five minutes uh grades and score and homework i think it's <clears throat> and this is um coming from someone who did not do this i think it's important for us to take our grades seriously now, I think we should make sure that it's not stressing us out too much. It's not overwhelming us. It's, you know, things like that. Um, but I think we need to strive for excellence. And we need to work hard at it. Um, there's a balance in not putting too much pressure on ourselves. Um, but uh, but challenging ourselves, too. Um, and being good stewards of what we've been given. What do you think, Joey? Yeah. Um, I definitely didn't. Well, I took my grades seriously, but it was only because I had to. Um, junior year was a rough one for me. That was like the hardest year of school I've ever had. Um, and I was in my phase of really not caring about most things. Like I just, I wasn't doing great in life and I wasn't doing great things. And I was just in this this big season of just not caring and just being closed off to things so it took a lot of um not discipline but a lot of work from my parents to to actually get me to focus and just apply myself to school but I mean when you do that and like you realize that you're doing school for a reason it's a lot easier to keep up with your grades um I also recommend not procrastinating because I mean it like Tyler was talking about not getting too stressed out or overwhelmed by school but when you procrastinate it makes it like way easier and you're just freaking out like it's the night before the paper is due and you got to write this whole five page paper it's just not worth it and i really recommend getting started on things early yep that's good um let's talk about nighttime routines i think it's important too uh to help ourselves out at night by having things ready for the next morning mm -hmm. um so then we're not you know, stressed out and going crazy in the morning. I think it's important for us to go to bed early. We've talked about um, sleep before on this podcast. Um, so I, I think it's important for us to do that. So, um, yeah, yeah, Joey, talk about that just real quickly about why sleep is important. All right. I think this is the most important thing in anybody's routine. Sleep is, besides food and water and God, sleep is literally what keeps you alive um it like <clears throat> you gotta think about it like like the gym if you train your biceps super hard they're gonna be sore the next day if you yeah there you go tyler's flexing his arm for anybody not watching the video i think he almost broke my screen it was massive but um like if today i had three papers to write and then I went to bed super late and woke up super early tomorrow, I would just feel like crap. And it's because I'm straining my brain and I'm working my brain, but I'm not giving it the recovery that it needs and the rest that it needs. So especially during school, I think it is very important to get in a good habit of sleeping and having a sleep schedule. Like I'm, I'm very strict with my sleep, or at least I try to be. Um, like last night, I went to bed at 10 p.m. after I got home from youth group. And then I didn't sleep great last night because there were some crazy thunderstorms that kept waking me up. But I went to bed at 10 and I woke up at like 6. So it might seem a little like taxing at first. And I mean, at nighttime, you're not really missing much on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Like that's just a bunch of the same, same thing, just like these 15 second videos. But I mean, when you, when you, um, prioritize your sleep, you'll start to feel a lot better. Yeah, it's amazing how much it changes just sleep, just in general. Um, and then I think our morning time routine too. Mm. Not uh, not being too rushed and crazy and things like that and making sure. I'm telling you, I, I think spending time in God's Word in the morning uh, really can change your day. Um, as opposed to reading it, you know, at other times throughout the day. And so tr try to make that time. Um, that'll require you waking up earlier. Um, I get it. 
Um, but I think uh, it could really be worth it for you. So if you don't believe me, try it. Try it for a week and see what it's like. Um, but yeah, it'll take a little bit of getting used to. And so, um, and then, Joey, do you take cold showers? No way. Your dad does a cold plunge every morning, right? Every single morning. He's, he's a little bit of a hippie, sleep. but tell him about it. I mean, I think it's fascinating. I think if he did, if he cut his hair and did all the stuff he did now, it'd be like at least 10% less hippie. It's the hair, man. I mean, Probably. his hair rocks, but the cold plunge is just, it's very hippie. And I think it's, I think the hair's to blame. But for, I don't even know how long he's been doing it. I think it's been like at least a year. He has this tank. It's it looks like the most redneck thing you've ever seen. It's this big plastic tank and he has it like wrapped in uh in like AC tape, like to keep stuff cold. And then he has like like one of the sun reflectors that you put on your windshield to block the sun, but he has that to like hold the cold in. Uh he has cardboard boxes all over it. He has this pump that like pumps in cold water and cools the water down. So every morning he gets in like I think it's usually like 60 degrees, which doesn't sound very cold. Like, if you go outside and it's 60 degrees, like, you just need, like, a long sleeve t-shirt. But if you get in some 60-degree water, man, it is, it's something else. You, like, want to fight a bear and lift some weights at the same time. It's crazy. What a combo. I did it two times. It's, man. Did you fight a bear and lift weights at the same time? No. I mean, I think if I would have fought Dad, it would have been pretty close. but. There were no Are bears you calling around. your father a bear? No, oh, I think he's a little closer to a gorilla, in my opinion. But I think a bear is very suitable. He's a very nice gorilla. Yes, I yeah. Talk to my dad. That's a nice guy. Super smart. Yeah, everybody always talks about how he's super quiet. But man, if you get him started on something, you're gonna you're gonna regret saying that. Ask him about mindlessness. <clears throat> Do that. Ask him. Uh, the other night, I'll tell this story really fast because we're running out of time. But the other night, I uh, I was talking with my dad about like thinking and how I just feel like my brain is just constantly running and I'm always thinking about something and just I wish I could just shut it off. And I told my dad, I was like, sometimes I wish I was just like really, really dumb and I could just like turn my brain off. And that led to an hour long conversation about like why I didn't. Why I shouldn't wish I was dumb and then like stress and and uh, cortisol and adrenaline and so it, you'll just go down a rabbit hole if you talk about the right thing. So go up to Ryan Sergeant and tell him, that, "Hey, wish I wish I was dumb." And then yeah, he'll call him Glenn. Though call him Glenn. That's his actual biological name. That is his government name. So awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, Thank you. And um, we're excited to be back at it. And uh, we'll have another podcast up there soon. Um, But yeah, we appreciate you listening. And uh, we're glad you're back at school. And uh, just strive for excellence and live on mission. Hmm. Yeah. I guess that's it. That is it. Goodbye. Bye.